Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how regex, if not properly understood and configured, can actually not only tank your application's performance, but even kill it. If you like type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now before that, just a quick reminder that I will be running my two-day workshop Introduction to Effective Testing in C-Shop and .NET in a bunch of conferences this year. For now, it is NDC Minnesota and NDC London, but NDC Porto and NDC Copenhagen are coming up soon so make sure you check the links in the description and speak with your manager to see if you can make the trip now back to the video now let me show you what i have here and we're going to start with a simple constant everybody knows what regex is but nobody knows regex we can just admit that so with that in mind let me show you the following this is a piece of regex that is widely used on email validation now i know that's a long one but if we actually copy that over here and I search for that exact regex on GitHub, then as you can see, tons of files are found containing it from JavaScript to Microsoft's own tips and tricks to SDKs to Ruby to more C sharp things like the email address attribute. This has been widely used over the years to validate emails and was even in .NET framework. Now, what I want to do is use this regex to match some emails. So I'm going to go with my email over here and if i just quickly run that not only does it match it but it tells me how fast it did very very fast great and if this is not uh, an, a valid email then when i run it it's gonna say no makes sense now here's the thing with this piece of regex it can have a lot of backtracking happening in here now what is backtracking in regex well the main idea is pretty simple you say i'm gonna try one thing and if that fails i'm gonna go back and try another thing now this back and forth is very powerful and very useful but it takes quite a lot of compute in some cases and it doesn't really scale well so the best case scenario is going to be very fast but the worst case scenario is going to be really really bad and you have to keep in mind that regex behind the scenes it's still going to act as code in fact we can go into a regex visualizer and see what's going to be generated for a given regular expression for example if i go over here this is the regex and this is the string i want to match and then i can visualize all the actions and all the decisions being made to match that string and if i go over here this website will even generate the c code equivalent of what this pattern would basically run and you can see that it's a bunch of i'm gonna try this if this then that if not then go to here and this go to is above and you can see we're going over here to try something else and then if that succeeds and go back here so you can see things like backtracking frames if i go here and i let it run then when backtracking is happening which as you saw is the thing going back then it's going to show me the frames here let's just give it a second just so i can show you before i move on here you go this is a backtracking frame and if i skip forward you're going to see another one where we go back to validate now to see why this is problematic i'm going to comment this bit out and add another one now what i did is i brought in this regular expression which as we go exponentially will be used to visualize how with the input growing the execution also grows due to backtracking so we're going to go ahead and run this and you can see that we go from well this is the initialization so don't worry about this but then 0 0.28 milliseconds 0 0.42 0 0.91 to then 3.32 and as you can see this is basically a double of this and this double of this and then we have this doubling of operations as we go meaning that if i go all the way to 25 let's say and i let this run then as you can see this goes to half a second to a second to 1.6 seconds to 3.2 and this is just based on how the input grows let me show you how this works with an email just to understand how bad this can be because you presumably have this validation in your application someone can put in an email and then that email will be validated on the server so if i go ahead and i delete that and i change this and from nick chaps as i go to n.n.n.n.n which you know could be subdomains and i'm gonna keep doing that then if i go at the end and i change this dot com to dot c and then a space let's say someone passed and called your api with a space so it didn't go through the ui which might do some uh, trimming at the end then when i run this look how long this runs for and not only that i can hear my fans going because my cpu let me just quickly run this as you're gonna see here is getting pinned so you can see this core over here this thread being high and then this is being passed to another core over here and i'm sure it's going to be passed 
to another core somewhere else. Yeah, it goes here. So now imagine that this is done by 32 bad actors or 32 different tabs. If that's done, then my whole CPU will be pinned in 100% just trying to process this regex. And the problem is that if I remove a few of them and I let it run again, then, you know, this might be a bit faster. Let's see how it executes. It still takes a long time. I need to be shorter. Let's say something like that. Yeah, so 1.3. But if I add just one more from 1.3, we're going to go to presumably 2.6. Yes, it's, it's bang on exponential growth. Now, I can do a few things to optimize this because you might be thinking about this. I can add explicit capture. Um, and if I do that, then that 2.6 will go to 661 milliseconds. And I could also, if I wanted to, compile it and cache it. And if I do that, then this will be way, way faster. But it's still prone to this exponential growth backtracking issue. And as you can see, as I added more things, even compiled and explicit capture, it still takes a long time and I can still hear my fans going. And yeah, as you can see, this took 10 um, seconds. So if I run this again without one of the ends, then presumably this will take I don't know, five seconds if it scales double, it does. So you can see the problem. Now, the first obvious thing you can do is improve your regex. And yes, there are better ways to validate for this over the years. Better ones have been created. However, not everyone can do that, mainly because nobody knows how to write regex. <laughs> oh, and by the way, before I move on to the solution, I want to point out that you might be thinking, oh, Nick, just add a source generator and this will go from, um, what is it now, 2.5 because I removed one? Yeah, 2.5, it's going to go to something way lower. The truth is, source generators only really affect the startup uh, performance. So if I go ahead and I add one, let's make it look like this. So I have generated regex and don't worry about writer being weird. This thing still compiles normally. So I can go ahead and I can use it here. So regex stuff dot email regex and I can run this. Now, this would probably take 2.5 seconds, but I have seen regressions in some cases where uh, it doesn't quite match it. And... From what I can see, it's taking longer. I don't know if this broke. I didn't actually try this, but I just wanted to um, shut down any claims. Okay, this is working. It returned false because it didn't match it. So as you can see, even the source generator is actually slower than the compiled version over here. Now, like I mentioned, better regex. Okay, sure. But what else can we do? There's a few things you can do. And I'm going to start with the first one, which is the new thing added in .NET 7. There's an option now here in regex called no backtracking. And this is actually something that many regex engines around the world have started adding because of how catastrophic this can be. I think it has taken down Cloudflare in the past and even the V8 engine uh, recently, or maybe a year ago, added the no backtracking option just because of how hard it can hit your system. And if I do that now, then you can see this is super fast, still returns. And if I introduce the previous loop, which is supposed to show you how this thing exponentially goes slower, if I run the same thing with no backtracking over here, then as you can see, there is no exponential growth or slowdown as the thing progresses. Now, depending on your .NET version and your use case, this might not be an option, but I should point out that it is something you could try and use to improve your situation. However, the other thing you could do is you can add a timeout. If you go to any of these regex methods, both the uh, field over here or the variable, I can go ahead and remove backtracking, and I can add an extra parameter here and pass down a time span. And this time span will be from seconds, let's say one over here, and what this will do now is, even if this is supposed to take uh, a long time because it's a bad actor trying to do this, this will actually throw on the one second mark and say the regex engine timed out while trying to pattern match this string. Because really, should an email take a second or up to a second to be validated? No. So if someone is trying to do that, then they're a bad actor and you can cut them early. Now, if someone spams fast enough, then you can still be put in a situation where this is actually bad because a second is a long time. So you can go and decrease it and go to, I don't know, milliseconds and say, okay, what's the normal time this should take? I don't know, maybe 10 milliseconds, maybe 20 under load. I don't know. You're going to have to benchmark it. But adding something like this will actually just deal with the problem in a way where it just covers it up, which for most bad actor cases, it might be good enough. Now, I recommend that you actually wrap 
the things that's supposed to throw a timeout with a regex match timeout exception and then do whatever you want with that suppress it it's completely up to you but you can do something like this and if you do something like this then as you can see the thing will fail very very fast and it won't throw an exception i mean it will throw it but we're gonna catch it over here and this is something that is supported in the source generator stuff as well you can pass it as a parameter and say uh, match timeout in milliseconds and you can say okay 50 milliseconds or whatever and this will still work and then the other way you can approach this if you don't want to add the time span from milliseconds or seconds on every regex thing you use in your code is you can actually access the current app domain so i'm going to go ahead and remove this timeout from over here and over here and you can go to app domain get the current domain and then set data and if you set this specific piece of data regex default match timeout you can actually override the match timeout for every regex expression that doesn't have one specified so you can say from milliseconds and we can say 50 and if i run that even though i don't specify one here it still throws because it's getting it from the current app domain so that's another way you can deal with this Ultimately, which approach you choose to go forward with is completely up to you. Improving your regex, using a timeout, no backtracking, you get to choose. I can't make the decision for you, but I should raise awareness to this issue. And given how much regex code is copied from things like Stack Overflow into our projects, this can be a vulnerability you have in your code right now. And it's only a matter of time until a bad actor tries to abuse this. But what are your thoughts? Did you know about this problem and do you have it? Leave a comment down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this, sharing the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.